Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sigray Chat. Here on Wednesday morning, we had the happy hour last night, and the NGN function, and may I say, both were in well form last night. Ladies and gentlemen, our first special guest here this morning is our second keynote speaker from the symposium. It is Adam Middleton. How are you this morning, sir? Good morning. How are you, Kerry? I am I'm, well. I am well. Can, can I say, first of all, I thought the NGN event last night was really good. I thought the, the team put on a really, really nice event. It was but a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. And also, there was a lot of people. It was a real mix of people. And it, it, was, it was great to have some dialogue. And I think we were talking with, uh, with Michelle Organay last night about various topics. And Phil, Phil was there as well. And we were talking about a bunch of different things. So really good. Really good not only to see the NGN colleagues, but also some of the, sen the senior people. And, and as I was saying, Phil was there as well. And that was really good. It, it was actually great. Because initially, I thought it was just going to be young people there. But it wasn't. It was like it was a mix. It was great to see oh, everyone there to, to, to get involved, which was just fantastic. And the young people. And what I loved the most was the number of women I saw there last night. And that's what I want to start with tonight. You were at the um, Women in Energy yeah. uh, uh, oh, yesterday, I think that was. Yeah, yesterday morning. And you're quite passionate about new talent and, and diversity in yeah. the energy uh, sphere and the engineering industry. Um, how do we get more women in the industry? We, we, we've got to do a better job. I think uh, Alison from Trans, uh, Transpower was uh, really, really to the point when she was saying we just got to do a better job with the pipeline of talent. And uh, Merrim also from uh, AMO, I thought she did a great uh, speech, opening speech yesterday, really talking about opportunity. And, and it's, it's working all the way through you know, the, the, the career cycle, right from, you know, we, we talked about 14-year-olds uh, and how do, we, how do we get the message through about energy transition and energy to, to that 12 to 14 year old group at school. Because um, one of the challenges may be is we don't give the information as, as an industry uh, to the teaching community. And the teaching community, if they haven't got the information, it's really tough to actually educate and accompany some people in that choice. And it's a big choice at the age of 14. You know? uh, as a, would you know, what, did you know what you wanted to do in your 14? Do I know what I want to do now? Yeah, it's a good no. point. Excellent point. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's, it's all about choice and keep giving you the maximum amount of choice. You know, I've got a, a colleague in London and, and she's got a 14-year-old daughter. Yeah. And, and, you know, we have a discussion and saying, well, it's all about giving you the maximum of choice when you're 16 years old and you're choosing your, uh, your, your subjects to study to 18 and then what are you going to do at university? Just keep your options open and the world's going to change. You know, it's the most dynamic period, certainly in our industry, for 100 years. Yeah. Just give yourself choice. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm biased. I think STEM subjects are really, really important for that choice basis. Mm. Well, you, you talk about it, it's, it's a very dynamic, global, well, situation we have right now. Yeah. And obviously you're talking about energy tra transition and how we industrialize that. How exactly are we going to get the, the policy reforms in place to make this happen? I, I think it's back to education and I think it's back to communication to start with. You know, I, I spend a lot of time every week, I'm in government in, in Europe, talking, sharing what's actually going on. Uh, I, I find there's a lot of people really now interested in energy transition and what it means in practical terms. And then bringing real examples of how companies and corporations are actually addressing the issues, the practical things they're actually doing. You know, I talked on Monday in the keynote about standardization, about industrialization, but what does that actually mean? Yeah. You know, it, it, it means you know, having one design and using it multiple times. You know, it's, it's taking away some of the, some of the preferential engineering. Because we, we need to build stuff in, in unprecedented volumes. And if we don't get the volumes and the logistics right, we're not going to hit 2030 and 2050 goals. You know, the, 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 the volume increase is just biblical. And we've got to start thinking differently in terms of logistics rather than just the, 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 best, the best solution. It's not necessarily the best solution every time. It's one we can now deliver in volume. And I think that's a key message for government. Right. OK, so let me, let me see if I'm getting this right here. Not only do we have to change the industry that we're currently in and having, say, more companies talk to each other and say, okay, we're going to adopt these standards, we have also need to get government on board. Do we also need to then get 
regulators, and I'll use the example yeah. of, the, of the, the banking industry have like APRA and ASIC, which regulate the banks in Australia and say, you need to go according to these standards. Mm. Is that something that we need to do in the energy industry? I, I think it's a great parallel. I think one of the great concerns in our industry is the regulatory models that we're using in, in a number of countries is based on history, on a rear view mirror. Yep. Now, as we touched upon on, on Monday, we've got this big bend in the road called energy transition, and it's different. You know, we're going to have to do a bunch of different things. We're going to work with the, the technologies we've got today, and then there's new emergent technologies coming along. Our regulatory model has got to be able to adapt to the changing conditions, and a, and a condition that's got volume, volume deployment. In, in Europe, you know, we, we work under very strict compliance guidelines in terms of bidding, etc. You know, if you, if you bid a, a major project, you may have seven or eight consortia spending multiple millions of dollars actually putting these bids together. You know, if you've got eight consortia, seven are gonna lose, and you, you lose that capacity. Our industry can't lose that capacity anymore. We need everybody, you know? So what, what are those changes in the regulatory model that we actually need to be able to accompany a better use of those resources? Thinking larger, thinking from an industry basis. Because at the end of the day, Yes, competition and having proper competition rules is essential. And we need to use the resources. Our, our constraint in energy transition is not only material constraint, supply chain, but probably even more important is human constraint. You know, there's only so many people in our industry today. And, and going back to your original point, that's why it's just so important. The energy industry, um, the uh, transmission distribution, the, the power network industry, really comes to terms with a way of how do we attract more people in, into our machinery? How yeah. do we keep them? How do we develop them? How do you, how do you get more smartest people in the room? Well, we, I think you, you've you, already got the smartest people in the room. We, we've got a real, real great group of people. We were talking earlier about what, you know, coming, coming to Seagray, coming to Cairns, it's a fantastic group of people. Yeah. And, and you're meeting friends again. And you know, we, we say this is the best social network in the world in, in energy. Seagray, you know, what's its value proposition? It, it's, it's a social network. You know, it's the who's who. You know, you come to Cairns or you come to Paris, you've got everybody in, in your particular domain of activity or in your expertise, everybody's in the room. It's, it's, it's a fantastic place to exchange, network, learn. And, and, and again, I think Alison, um, Andrew made some great points yesterday in the uh, Women in Energy group. It's all about lifelong learning. And it, it's a way of really increasing the, um, uh, the quality of life for different groups in the community. And, and looking at education, and you know, one of the things we talked about yesterday morning is what, what can we do as Seagray really to help that increasing that, that academic level you know, yep. and, and make it important. Mm. So, okay, so we've got the smartest people in the room and they've got solutions yep. to these problems that we have going forward. How do we translate the complexity of the solutions into something simple for, for, for people like myself that don't know about it? I, I think that's a real great conundrum and, and you know, being a, a protection engineer by training, we're very good at a lot of detail. And I, I was talking to uh, a great colleague from uh, Australia, Rod Hughes, this morning as one of the, the industry's experts on uh, protection and control on IEC 61850. It's real techie stuff, right? But we've got to take a step back. Uh, you know, there's the, the issue of why, why are networks important? Um, a lot of politicians get the fact that we need to build a lot of uh, uh, solar PV, we need to build a lot of re uh, renewable generation, uh, wind, but then you've got to explain, we've got to plug it in. You know, the, 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 it's great that we, 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 you know, we're going to build in Europe 300 gigawatts of offshore wind in the North Sea. Uh, the biggest country in Europe is going to be the North Sea. Um, that's 20,000 turbines. We've got to plug in. And if we're not developing the power network to go with the generation, all that effort that's gone in and, and the, the work that's gone in to build the generation is going to be lost. So we, we've got to do this. We've got to work as a team. And it, it's got to be stitched together. You know, it's, it's got to be joined up thinking. And, and that, again, that's one of the really important messages to government and to regulator, that the, rule, the rules and the support have got to go alongside both for you know, uh, generation, for green generation, but also to be able to plug it in and to be able to use it. You know, um, 
renewable generation is distributed. It's, it's, it's different to conventional fossil generation. It's not in big lumps anymore, but it's spread out. And our networks are designed for big lumps of generation. So we're going to have to make some significant changes over the coming years to accommodate this spread out generation. It's different. It's going to need some new technologies. It's going to need some intelligent networks. And we're going to, we're going to work through this. It's not a, going to be a big bang, but it's step by step, you know? Uh, what do you think SIGRAY's role in, in, in changing, I suppose, the way things are, are, are currently operating? How, how do you see that with, with SIGRAY? You know, there's a great piece of work ongoing at the moment that SIGRAY is putting together in terms of its vision for the future. And it's got to be dynamic, because as we were just saying, this is going to change. We've got to accommodate change. And maybe one of the things over our industry in the last 100 years, you know, what's actually really fundamentally changed? We've got a period of change now that is radically different. And so you know, we, we've written a, a strategy document to 2030. But this, we're going to have to look at it every year because the speed of change is incredible. You know? So we're going to have to accommodate change. We're going to have to accommodate new solutions as they come along. And we, we were saying on Monday, you know, the world's changed in 12 months, you know, in the, in the last two years. In, in Europe, for example, oh, massively. You, know, you know, we have this awful situation in Ukraine, yeah? and, and that's going to change the game in, in that particular space because, you know, the, the, the Ukrainian community has lost 40% of its power network. And one of the things, hopefully, as soon as the, uh, the conflict ceases, you're going to have to rebuild it. That's going to really impact the, the global community in, in terms of supply chain, in terms of resources, because it's going to be a humanitarian effort. So these, these things are, are really radically different. And, and our strategy as Seagray is how do we accommodate and accompany the change? How do we plug together people globally? How do we bring expertise from different places? And it's about sharing great ideas. You know, Cairns is great because you know, the different uh, study committees come together. You know, I had the great privilege on Sunday night to be with the substation group B3. And there was a lot of great discussion around the table about best practice. Well, can, can we learn something from, from North America or Brazil or, and, and share that with what's actually going on in Australia? It's all about networking. It's all about sharing best practice and great ideas. Adam, thank you very much for your time. Is there any last messages you'd like to pass on to the delegates before we wrap up? Well, I think it's enjoy, enjoy the rest of Cairns. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky. I'm going to take a few days vacation at the, at the end of the symposium. I'm really looking forward to going out to the reef. Oh, I've, that's I've, awesome. I've never Love been it. to the reef, and it's something we've always wanted to do. Uh, and also going up into the rainforest tonight. That's, again, something I've always really wanted to do. That should be an absolute cracker. Thank you very much for your time, Adam. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Adam Middleton. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We're done.